goodness sakes, what mess do I have? Okay, here we go. Oh, hey, welcome back. And if you remember where we left off last time, I just finished up mounting the rails and I was gonna put the top back on the torsion box, which I did. But before I did that, I drilled all the holes that uh, we were gonna create the downdraft vacuum system, clamping system, but that's gonna be in another video. And so we'll see that later. But just to let you know, I did do that before I put this back on because I don't want to take this lid off again. Okay, and I was talking about this part and it just came in the mail the other day. I'd like to show you how this works. So I had mentioned this part and it's the air actuated cylinder that I'm gonna use as a registration guide or a fence eventually. And it just takes the smallest amount of air pressure to engage that and make that come up. And then air pressure on the other side makes it come down. I'm gonna attach something to this, whether it's a wood fence or a dowel or another rod or something. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do that yet, but we will do that in the future. So I was able to use the same bracket because I had the adjustment. I had these slots in here and I was able to get these V-groove bearings to go to the height that I needed to make this fit and it rolls pretty well. So we're just going to use this as a template. What I need to do is make this go down into this area here, make this a little bit longer because eventually the motor will go here that will attach underneath to a rack and pinion to drive this back and forth. So I got to create that mount there. So I'm just going to put a couple inches extra right here. My dimensions you can see here from center to center is eight inches from center to center here is eight and a quarter. So since I'm an experienced woodworker and I've made many mistakes in my life, before I actually make this full on piece, I'm going to use this piece that I've already got make a template to make sure that it's exactly right. Want to make this the length that I need, cut my 45s, create my slots down here so I can have my adjustment, put some barrel nuts in right here so that I can use the screw for the adjustment mechanism. Um, so let's get started. Okay, I did a mock up here of our uh, bracket for our gantry because I like to test out and make sure that my piece is gonna fit before I actually do the real thing. Anyhow, the distance here can be whatever you want it to be. Mine's 10 inches wide on this bracket. I put these eight inches on center. My top to the bottom of the rail is seven and eight. And these can be, these right now are from center to center or an eighth and an eighth. So it's just an inch added on for the v-groove bearings these slots are a little bigger than what i wanted i'm going to adjust this a little bit so that i don't i don't need that much adjustment there's going to be a barrel nut that goes in here with the quarter inch screw that will go in through here that will help us adjust this in and out but i like what i've got here now i can go ahead glue up my two pieces of three quarter together and make this an inch and a half thick piece and install it as such. So let's get going. Okay, here's our layout. From the bottom of the bracket to the top bolts will be 12 and a quarter inches. Each one of the bolts that holds the V-groove bearing is gonna be three quarters of an inch set in from the side. Eight inches down from that, we're gonna start a slot that will go this way at a 45. Another inch down from that, or nine inches total, from the top down here 
and an inch in on both sides is where I'll drill the pilot hole to start the 3 8 slot that's going to run at a 45. Then another half inch down and just about a half inch to maybe three quarters, it's going to be on the same 45 line, put a half inch down. We're going to put a barrel nut or a cross dowel nut and we're going to use a quarter inch Phillips head screw to adjust that 3 8 bolt up and down so we can get it tight on the rails. We're going to cut this here at a 45 so we have a flat spot here to drill our hole and that screw can mount into. So I'm going to cut a slot from here to here for the bolt for the V-groove bearing to adjust up and down to make it fit snug. Problem is my 3 8 router bit on my router table only goes through just barely three quarters. So I'm going to have to do it in two passes. I'm going to have to do it blind. So what I did, I set this in place. marked where the edge was, came over here an inch and three eighths. I know that's the length that I need here on top. And I'm just gonna pull it back until it gets to that line, call it done. Got a fence here to guide me so it'll slide even all the way, keep that slot about as straight as I can. Gonna flip it over and do the other side. This should go all the way through. There you go, all the way through, clean. Make sure that the inside washer is small enough to where it stays inside. You can see the black because if you have this large washer on here and you tighten it down, it'll bind and this bearing won't spin. I changed my mounting strategy. This 
washer that I said was just small enough, was not quite small enough. And when I really cinched down on it, it was having trouble and it was binding a little bit. Still slid, but it just was too tight. So I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna put just like a regular fender washer, then a lock washer that's even smaller than that first washer. Drop the V-groove bearing on, throw our nut, and uh, they gave us plenty of clearance. And that way I didn't have to cinch it up as tight to make it hold because the lock washer, washer gave us that tension that we needed to maintain our position and it rolls really well. Okay, this one here rolls great. One on the other side rolls pretty decent as well. What I did is I tightened these completely and I tightened these just till they were about snug to where they could still slide a little bit. So when I ran this from here all the way down the rail, it pushed these out just where they needed to be. And then I just used the Phillips head screw, tightened that in till it just touched the bolt just to hold it in place. Then I snugged it up all the way and made it tight. And that seemed to work pretty well because these things, they roll all the way down without much of a problem. Okay, so I'm actually complete to this point, but you're not gonna see that in this video. I'm gonna save that for the next video because we're already about 15 minutes, so we'll see you next time.